Hey there, welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about some techniques that I use to create bubble canopies. Now if you're interested in doing an entire airplane, I do have a playlist with a whole bunch of videos on how to create a detailed uh, aircraft model in Blender. Uh, but I had a number of people ask me specifically about uh, bubble canopies, so I thought I would dedicate a, a video to just them. Alright, so let's bring up an empty uh, Blender project here and I want to bring in an image plane that we can use for uh, shaping our canopy. So I've got a good one here. It shows top and side uh, profiles. Now it's always important, at least I think it's important, to model your uh, Blender objects in full scale. So for example, I know that the uh, wingspan of this aircraft is 12.09 meters. So I want to scale up my image plane so that this distance from here to here is 12.09 meters. Now I'm already in uh, metric and I'm using millimeters as my length. So if, and I've got my cursor set in the middle here. I hit uh, shift C to make sure my cursor's in the middle. Shift A mesh cube and let's make that a wireframe. And then over here I want to change this to one uh, 12,090 millimeters. You can see how large that is. And now I just need to scale this until my wingtips are as big as that is. So let me move this down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the X axis for now. So let me reduce the opacity of that so we can see what we're doing. So I'm just going to line it up here, moving it up along the Z axis until my pitot tube is pretty much in the middle there. And now what I just need to do is 3D cursor mode because I want to scale from this point. I'm just going to hit S and I'm going to scale until my wingtip gets right to the edge of that box. It's maybe a little off, but it's pretty close. So I think that's probably pretty good. That's good enough for now. Uh, and that'll guarantee us that the uh, canopy we build and any other objects we put in here. As long as we keep everything 1-1 one, one scale, uh, everything's going to fit nicely together. So I can get rid of this cube. I don't need this anymore. And maybe make this a little bit more opaque so we can see a little better. And I'm going to hit F2 and I'm going to call this uh, image plane uh, side, let's say. And I'm going to duplicate it, move it up RY to rotate along the 90 degree, uh, along the Y axis, 90 degrees. GZ to move it up. I'm going to top view. I'm going to move it across the X axis until the pitot tube is centered here. Get a nice view from the top. Right, that's good. Maybe just move it up a little bit more, get it out of the way. And this one is going to move along the X axis. So it's out of the way. And let's call this one IP top. And I want to lock the scale on these just as a precaution because we don't want that ever to change. I'm going to take both of these, hit M, create a new collection, call it IP for image plane, throw them up here, and I'm just going to turn off my ability to select them because when we're working, we don't want to accidentally select those image planes. Now, I do have another image plane that I want to bring in here. Oops. This one, uh, let me get zoom in here, uh, is nice because it has... Uh, individual cross sections for various parts of the canopy and then it tells me where exactly those cross session cross sections exist on the canopy you know from the side view uh, but obviously it's not the right size so we can bring this down here and I'm just going to try to find some point like a nice sharp edge somewhere maybe the back of the canopy here where am I there we go and maybe make it a little less opaque so I can see a little better. And I'm just going to take like maybe the back here of this canopy and put it right about there. Right click, put my cursor there. I'm in cursor mode already. And now if I scale, it's going to scale from that point. And I can keep scaling and we'll get the two images to line up over each other. That's pretty good. Profiles meet pretty well. All right, I'm good with that. And let's hide those. We don't need those quite yet. 
So that gives us a nice profile picture, and then these are the cross sections. But unfortunately, in this image, the cross sections are at an angle, um, just because they wanted them perpendicular. But when we're doing them in Blender, it'd be nice if this line here was vertical. So I'm going to call this IP sections, and I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to hide that first one. And this one I'm going to take, and this is just because this uh, these sections here are at an angle. I'm going to move it over. I'm put my cursor right in the middle here, and I'm going to put this line right through the origin, and then I'm going to rotate, right, because I'm on uh, 3D cursor, but I can rotate around that point. I'm going to rotate until this line looks like it's going along the z-axis nicely. See how that looks. All right, good enough. All right, so let's disable that because I don't want to select it anymore. And now we're just going to create these, these curves uh, one at a time. And it's the same process for each. I've got the cursor here along the center line. So I'm going to say add. I'm going to add a circle, the mesh circle. And I want a circle with 16 vertices. And I'm picking 16 because I know that this many faces or edges is going to mesh nicely with a quad sphere that I'm going to create later. So just kind of thinking ahead, that's why I picked 16. So I go into edit mode. I don't actually want I don't actually need most of these. I can get rid of these, these, and these. I'm just going to keep this bit of the arc, get rid of those vertices. I'm going to move my cursor here, go into object mode, and then I'm going to move my um, origin to the uh, 3D cursor. So my origin's here. This does a couple things. One, it uh, gives me a, a point that I can um, use when I'm placing these later. Um, I can scale to this point. I can rotate around this point. And when I mirror and stuff, everything will mirror from that point. So good reasons to have all that stuff there. I'm going to control A so I can apply rotation and scale just to make sure that everything's rotated and scaled properly. And now I'm just going to move it up to this first one here. And let's add a subdivision to it. Give it two. Go into edit mode. And as long as we're making our changes in edit mode, the um, scale and stuff won't get changed. So I'm going to switch to active element so that I'm scaling from whatever point I've currently selected. I'm going to hit S, bring it up like that, S is Z, S Y, and then if I want to move individual points, I can either just move an individual point or I hit O key. You can see how that turns on, proportional editing up here, I hit O, it turns off, O, it turns on, um, and that's going to give me the ability to move uh, points uh, with some influence on either side of them, and you can change the amount of influence just by using your scroll wheel. So I'm just going to move this onto that line, maybe move that one a little bit in, and maybe this one down just a little bit. All right, so there is our first curve, maybe a little bumpy. And sometimes you're deciding whether or not uh, you're following the inside of the line, the center of the line. Um, but I think that'll do. All right, so let's take this, and I'm going to shift D, Z, move it straight down. I'm going to put my origin right at the top of the curve, go into edit mode, select everything, select that tip, S, Z, bring it down to that. This is the uh, canopy sill line there, S, Y, bring it out, and then I can you know, maybe turn on um, portional editing and kind of drag some of these points out a little bit. Get them to line up. And it's important that each one of these cross sections has the same number of vertices as the, the ones adjacent to it uh, because we're going to loft these together and it's it's much easier to loft curves that are next to each other if they have the same number of verts. Um, otherwise you got to kind of like create triangles and retopologize stuff. So I'm just going to kind of speed up the video here and get this finished. So that's all the cross sections now. So let's hide, we don't need this image plane anymore, and let's turn back on the side one. I'm going to take all these guys, I don't want the that selectable. All right, so I'm going to move all these down, and these are just in order. This is the rear end, it goes here, and then this is the front section. So I'm just going to move these down, I'm going to put them in the position looking you know, right here, I'm making sure that that origin is right at the top of that point. 
And I'm just going to do that all along here and just move them along. Alright, so their, their origins are all in the right spot. So let's select all of them. And now I'm going to switch to um, individual origins, this one, and hit RZ90 negative, and that'll flip each one of these around its own origin as opposed to rotating them as a group. And now I can also just hit R and swing these into position, and they should all be pretty much parallel with each other. All right, so those are all lined up. So that's what we got so far. So that's looking good. And we are done with this section as well. We don't need that image plane anymore. In fact, I'm just going to move these up into the uh, image plane collection just to get out of the way. And we can turn this back on so we can see our you know, exterior of the aircraft. But let's focus on this for a moment. And I'm going to select all of them and then reselect one of them so it's the active object. Hit Control J to join them all together. And now we need to loft these together. There's a couple ways many ways to do things in Blender. So the one way is to select opposite edges and hit the F key and then hit an edge, select an edge, and hit FFF. You can do that. Or you can, if you want, let me turn off subdivision. You can double click on two parallel uh, edge loops and then right click and go to bridge edge loops and that'll fill it in for you. Um, either way is pretty quick. One of them, you can just kind of repeat the command. The other one, you got to keep going back in the menu. Or if you wanted to, you could certainly uh, create a um, a uh, shortcut for your bridge command if you use it enough. All right, so that is our uh, canopy here. And one thing I'm looking at just now, I don't like this kind of sharp transition there, so I'm just going to kind of bring this one down a little bit, maybe bring that one up a little bit. That'll just uh, help guarantee a little bit smoother um, curve there. All right, so let's add a mirror modifier to this on the X and you see that it's pointing that way that's because our orientation is messed up so I want to hit control A hit rotation and scale and now it's going to mirror properly across the X axis and put that above the subdivision and then you know there's the start of our canopy if you look at it from the side view we can double check to make sure that it's matching pretty well so I'm going to Maybe move it a little bit this way, and I'm just selecting this bottom piece here, and I'm going into Active Element. Hit SZ to, to bring that up. SZ to bring that up. Um, you know what I might do? I might bring back that other image plane, the side image plane, because it, it shows us something that this doesn't. So let me turn back on, turn the side one off, and we'll turn this one on. Um, and let me move it out along the x-axis here so it's in front and cut down on its opacity, maybe 0.18. All right, so if we look at this from the side, the, one of the nice things about this particular drawing is that it shows two curves here on the canopy itself. So you've got you know, the canopy line here, which is, you know, the hard edge of the canopy, but then up in the front, it's got two diverging lines. It's got this, you know, swooping curve here that comes down, and then it's got this flat line here. This flat line here represents the the flat edge of the front of the uh, canopy. See how the, it's curved, and then you've got this optically flat uh, piece of glass in the front. So that's what this line here means, but this curvy line here is what the canopy shape would be if there wasn't uh, a flat piece cut off the front. If your drawing doesn't have this curve, you can kind of imagine it by putting in a Bezier curve, where that goes up there, bringing it down, and then kind of creating your own. So I'm going to put this you know, on the canopy line there, move this one down here, the tip of the canopy, and then I'm just going to adjust the handles until They match with the uh, canopy as best as I can to give me some idea of you know where that curve might otherwise be so you can see you can create your own kind of curve here 
I just did that quickly. So if, you, if your drawing doesn't have this little bit of data, you can certainly recreate it. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to build our mesh to this line here, and then we're going to use a Boolean to cut off that flat bit. But since I have that line, I don't need it. I can get rid of it. All right, so if you remember the beginning of the video, I said that I picked the size of the circle so that it would match uh, the number of edges on a quad sphere. And I'm going to use a quad sphere on the front here and the back here as a primitive for creating the front and back of the uh, canopy. So I'm going to go into mesh and I want to look for, well, there's two different types of spheres you can use. There's a UV sphere, which looks like this. Um, I wouldn't use this because all these uh, lines come down and they all meet at this pole uh, and create all these triangles, which don't smooth very well. You can't sculpt them. They don't uh, subdivide particularly well. So there, there are some times when this is appropriate, but in this case, um, I don't use that, um, this primitive. You know, anytime I'm doing something that's kind of rounded in the front, like a propeller tip or um, a torpedo head or a drop tank or something like that, I'm going to use a quad sphere. And quad spheres are in the mesh, and you look down here under uh, round cube, and it's going to create a, by default, it's going to create a round cube. Uh, you can pick a, um, one of these other primitives. I'm going to choose quad sphere, and I'm going to change this to four, which will give me the right number of faces to uh, line up with our canopy edges here. So let me get into here, and just like we did before with the circle, I don't need a lot of this. So I'm going to get rid of the bottom. I don't need that. And I'm going to take this half. I'm going to hit P to separate it by selection, go back into object mode, and I'm just going to move this over here, and that's going to be the tail bit eventually. So now I'm just going to take this guy, and I'm going to move him down so that the origin meets pretty close to there, and then I can rotate it a little bit so that edge looks good. Go into edit mode, select everything, and I want to move my cursor right in the middle. So I selected both sides, selection to uh, cursor to selected. So my cursor now is like right in the center line. Um, and I'm going to select all these guys and I'm going to cursor mode and I'm just going to scale this down, scale it along Z and go to the top view, scale it along X, bring it in. And we're just trying to, we're trying to do, um, not, not push individual points at this point. We just want to kind of move things um, in large sections. So I can take these guys and now I can go back to active element and I've got the bottom one selected here. I can hit SZ. That's going to scale all these guys down. Do something here similar here. Scale these down. Same thing here. SZ. Bring those down. Go to the top view. And at some point it's going to be worth putting this into uh, subdivision mode, but for right now I can just hit SX, get things close. All right, so let's go in, make that a subdivision, give it two, and let's see how that looks. And you could also work from a mirrored object, and maybe I'll do that instead. We'll go uh, get rid of that. X faces mirror it. That way I only have to work on one side. Rotation scale, mirror first. All right. And let's do that. All right, that's better. So I can move this, move a couple of them forward. I'm just trying to, you know, track this line, scale out a little bit on the X. Go here. Maybe, um, Maybe rotate this up, or maybe skew it. Control, one of the more awkward commands, Control Shift Alt S, and hit Y to skew, X to skew. There we go. And it's going to rotate it without changing the length of it. And then SZ, kind of push it up there. So we got a reasonable uh, track there. It's going to change a little bit um, once we join these two things together. So I'm going to take this guy, this guy, join them together, go into edit mode. And now I'm going to merge these vertices together. So I'm going to take this, you know, the front of the plane, the front of the canopy, and then just merge those verts to the middle. So select one, select the other at last. Do the same thing here. I'm just hitting Shift R to repeat that command. Let's 
just going to snap it to last, smooth things out here. Those two are almost exactly in the same spot. All right, at last. All right. So let's put the subdivision and the mirror back on. Let's see how we look. All right, so we see some weirdness happening with the seam, and I'm going to bet that is because the um, normals are not uh, correct. So I just did a shade smooth. You can see how we've got uh, weird shading here, and that's probably because one of these, probably this one, is inverted. So let's go look at face orientation. Yeah, so the red bit is inverted and the blue bit is proper. So easy to fix, go into edit mode, select everything, shift N, so November, and that fixes all that. You can see how that shading stuff went away. We just turn off that and that looks good. All right, so a little bit of adjustment here. I want to move that up a bit so that it follows that curve. The more accurately we follow the shape in the front, the more accurate the um, shape of this window is going to be. It's going to have a, I'm trying to find a picture from the front. Um, it's got this very distinctive shape here and that, that shape can only be achieved if this curvature on either side of it is appropriate or accurate. Get this guy, maybe move him a little bit. Let's take a look at the top. Just make sure we're, and the drawing isn't quite symmetrical, so I'm just going to concentrate on the right hand side, making sure that you know, that stuff looks good. I'm just going to hit the G key and move that out a bit. All right, so let's take a look. We can do the back now, and it's pretty much the same process. So I'm, I'm just going to do it, and I'm not going to narrate it. So it's more or less in place, and now I'm just going to do the same thing where I join the bits together. Let's see how this looks. I'm going to push, oops, shade smooth, get that smooth. And there's a little bump there I can immediately see. And I'll take care of that. You can see how it dips inside, that's no good. So I just have to scale that out a little bit to smooth that out. Yeah, I really like using uh, scaling versus pushing individual points. You're much less likely to introduce a wrinkle or a bend or something because everything kind of stays proportional while you do it. How's that look? That looks a little weird here, doesn't it? So I think I'm just looking off to my right because I got uh, a um, pure ref bunch of pictures that I showed you on the right. I'm just going to smooth this out with a smooth vertices, see if that cleans it up a little bit. I think that looks a little better compared to the reference material. And it doesn't change our profile really. To maybe move this forward a bit so it follows it. And we really want this whole canopy to actually extend below the sill line um, of the actual finished canopy because we're going to use this as a kind of a mold to make all the other parts. And when we're doing that, we're gonna use the shrink wrap modifier. And we don't want the shrink wrap modifier trying to fight along this edge. We want it to be able to cling to a surface without having to worry about uh, a random vertex kind of going over the edge. So what I'm gonna do is I've, I've double clicked along the sill line here. I'm gonna hit the G key twice so I can move along normals. And then I'm gonna hit the C key which is going to let me drag the vertexes back out, but keeping them along the normal, so it shouldn't change the shape too much. And you know, maybe here, I might do it again, go to GG, C, just bring it down. I'm just trying to give myself some distance here. It's not going to really change the shape. I need to fix this a little bit. And it, it does make sense to take some time at this point to make sure your, your base mesh is accurate, because it's really going to make a difference in the final piece of work. All right, and just in case you're looking at the uh, profile here and saying that it's no longer matching the top view, and that's just because we, we've moved it down here. You know, we did that extension, brought it down, um, but the, the mesh does actually go through 3D space 
where it's supposed to. So if you look at you know, like this line here and look at side view, you can see that it's just above the line. Um, so we're still okay in that respect. Next thing we want to think about doing is um, maybe look at this in matcap mode. So we'll go to this shiny, shiny thing. And here you just want to look at this, this glossy bit and then roll it around. And let me get rid of the, there we go. Roll it around and as long as this shiny reflection stays nice and sharp, we've got a nice smooth edge. And it looks like we're, we're in pretty good shape. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, I'm going to hide it. Then I'm going to go into edit mode and intentionally make some uh, dimples in here, just so we can see how to fix them, just in case uh, maybe you have some problems with your mesh. So I'm going to hit you know, Alt-S and make a dent there. And you can see that when I roll this thing around, you, know, you get that, that, you can obviously see that distortion there. So what if you, what if you have something like that, how do you fix it? Uh, one way would be uh, to try to use the smooth vertex option. So you can go into and go into edit mode, select the vertex you want, right click, and then there's a smooth vertex. And you can hit Shift R, and that'll start to smooth things out. And that that usually does a pretty good job. Uh, one thing you have to be worried, of, one thing you have to I guess be caution with with smooth vertex is it can take away some of the volume. So if I take a bunch here and um, smooth them. If I keep doing that, you'll see that it's actually kind of decreasing the volume of the uh, object, and that might change your profile a little bit. Uh, you can use the Alt key and the S key to scale out along the normals, and you can see how I'm pushing that whole bit out. And you can hold the Shift key down while you do that. You can very gently move things in and out. Now uh, you can always go into Sculpt mode. So if I hit the uh, T key, oops, T key, and go into Sculpt mode. I have my sculpt options here, and there's there's inflate and there's smooth. So smooth is good, and up here you have options for how strong and how big that brush is. So maybe I could push this down a little bit and just kind of tap in here gently, and you can see that that changes it a little bit and gets your things smooth. Um, sometimes let's go back into edit mode. Maybe you have one point along a a line like this that is out of uh, wax. So let me hit G and Z and really push that in so that we've got a, a dimple there. Um, you can, um, if, if, if they're kind of lined up like this, you can select points on either side of the offending point. Shift S, cursor to select it. And that's going to put the cursor kind of in the geometric middle between these two points. And then if you go to 3D cursor mode, um, you can set S0 and that'll put the cursor back um, in the exact middle between these two points. Uh, there is an add-on you can get, it's called Edge Flow, which is also helpful. Um, if I select a couple of edges here, I select an edge uh, like that, and uh, maybe, yeah, that's fine. If you look down here at the bottom, there's a Set Flow and a Set Linear option that are enabled when you install the, set, the Edge Flow add-on. And I'll put a link for the add-on if you don't have it. Set Linear is going to make that selection a straight line. So if you want something that's perfectly straight, you can do that. Another option is the set flow, which will take into consideration adjacent lines and then try to blend the transition between the two so that you get a nice, a nice transition across all three of those lines. Um, so those are techniques I use to, to smooth things out. So let's get out of object mode. We can delete this guy and unhide this one. And I'm gonna call this one canopy so we can start keeping track of stuff. I think the next thing to do is turn back on our image plane. I want to cut out this face here. So let's go to let's go to random and single. Uh, you know what? We'll go to um, sorry. We'll go to random. That's what I want. Random. All right. So in the front of the canopy, there's this flat area, and it has a very distinct, almost an oval kind of shape. You can see it in that picture. See it here comes around. So we're going to try to recreate this shape, and this shape here is really dependent on how well we've made this rounded bit along the front. Um, so if this is accurate, this curve is accurate, then when we cut our piece off the front of the canopy, um, we should see this line get recreated 
uh, you know, close to the drawing. So we can cross our fingers here. I'm going to shift A and add a cube. I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to go back to medium point, scale it down. S Y to scale it lengthwise because we want to go from here. I'm going to roll it up. I'm going to rotate it, put it into place. And I'm just going to line it up with that that cut line like that, and then hit S. I want it on the center line, so let's move it to the center and hit SX and just make it like that. Now, since I'm in random color mode, you can see that I can see this oval here. There's a nice contrast in that oval. Now, you can't really see it from the top because the cube is, is bigger, but if we take if we take our image plane, oops, take our image plane, the bottom one, or the top one, and we duplicate it and we move it up and we can just hide this one for a moment and then if we go into inverted mode, sorry I moved it the wrong way, like that, there we go now we can see the effect of what's going to be the cutout because of these two colors um, and it actually looks not too bad, we've got we really want this contrast between the blue and the green here to run right along this line here. So we do have some adjustments to make. Should be right there. Now if your colors are too similar together um, and you're not seeing a contrast, uh, one thing you can do is to just change the name a little bit or change the name at all and it'll assign a... Oops, wrong one. So if I go into rename... Eh, if I rename this, I hit F2 and I call it something else. Now it's making a liar out of me. Yeah, sometimes when you rename it, it gives you a different color. Like it's somehow randomly based on the name. Um, so you might get a better contrast that way. So that's a pretty good contrast for us. It'll make it easy for us to adjust our underlying base mesh to meet that. So let me make sure that my image planes are not selectable. And now we just need to adjust this purple piece so that it this this line here is right here. Uh, we can do that in a couple ways. One, I can just take a point that's nearby and then hit Alt S and that's going to inflate or deflate. So I'm hitting Alt S to set the motion and then I'm moving my mouse forward or backwards until that line matches there. I'm going to select this one, go back to solid, Alt S, I slowly move my mouse forward now there's no point up here that I can take, so what I might actually do is add another vertex here and just Alt-S, drag that down a little bit. I really don't want to take that one. Maybe this one, Alt-S. So I, I don't want to add a, a, a dimple here. We'll see what happens. So let's add that boolean to this object boolean and I'm going to re... I will leave that one, I don't want to change the color, I was going to change the name but I, want, I like the contrast here so we're going to use this as that and I'm going to take this guy and just hide it for now so there's our windshield cutout you know, if we applied the boolean and you can see how it's hard to see if you have the boolean hidden, um, you know, with that object there, it really does make it easy for you to figure out exactly where that intersection of the two pieces is. So let's hide that again. And now let's go back into Mac Cap. And I'm going to go back to a single color Mac Cap. And I'm just going to roll my mouse around here and make sure that I didn't, when I was, you know, pushing those, those little vertexes around here, make sure I didn't really distort the surface and I think we're okay here. All right, and we look at it from the side, we've got a nice sharp transition uh, for, our, for our windscreen there. All right, well at this point we are at a milestone in the project. We finished our base mesh here, which is gonna be the foundation for all of the, the detailed parts. 
Uh, so the basic process is we're going to duplicate this uh, and then we're going to cut pieces off of it, uh, retopologize them, and then shrink wrap those individual pieces back onto this piece so that everything fits nice and snug and smooth. So let's do a little organization first. I'm going to call this canopy shrink. And we'll call this one boo for boolean. And let's see, image planes, I don't need this one anymore but I do want the side. Let's take a look at the, um, you know, actually I don't need this one either, this bottom one. Let me get rid of that one. I think it's that one. All right, good. All right, so let's look at the modifiers for this. I want to make sure that since this is going to be the shrink, that we're gonna shrink things onto this, we want the resolution to be high. Uh, the objects that get shrunk onto this will have a lower number here. Um, and you want that because if the if the thing you're shrinking onto has a higher number equal, then you're going to get some faceting. So we'll talk about that later. Um, let's see. All right, we're going to keep all that. So I'm going to duplicate this. Right click to cancel my movement, and let's hide the shrink. So we're just dealing with our our copied piece here. I'm going to apply the mirror. Oh, oh I eventually want to apply the boolean. See if I apply the boolean, it's going to lose that hole. So I want to apply the mirror first apply the boolean. I'm going to turn off my subdivision and then I'm going to cut it back in half again so I can just work on half. We just do half the work. All right, so this is our starting piece we're going to use for all of our other parts. I can mirror this and the mirror goes on top. Now for subdivisions I want this one to be two. So the one we're shrinking onto is four and this one is going to be two. If, if this is four or higher, you're going to get some weird faceting when you do the shrink wraps. Another um, modifier I want here is I want a bevel modifier. We'll use this later to create really nice edge uh, details. So you want, I use like one millimeter, two segments and weight. Uh, these distances here will be different if you didn't you know, do a full scale like I did at the beginning of the course. And the last modifier I want to throw in here is a shrink wrap, which is going to be that shrink wrap there. And you can see that if I toggle this on and off, it snuggles down. So we'll just leave that on for now. Subdivisions off, mirror on, bevel off. We don't need that for right now. All right, so the next process here is we're going to create um, some tools that we can use to cut off pieces that we don't need anymore uh, or, or, or you know, separate pieces. So let me get out of matcap, we'll go to random. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a piece to cut off the uh, canopy sill. So I'm going to put my cursor here, mesh, plane, edit mode, and I don't need those right now. And I'll just move the whole thing up here, put this vertex right there, E to extrude. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to move it way down here so that it goes kind of right through there. that and I don't think this sill is quite flat you can see it's a little high there so I'm gonna hit R to add a vertex here I'm gonna hit GZ just kind of pull it down a little bit it's still a little high here hit control R again GZ just to move things down all right so that's looking pretty good so the next thing we want to do is we want to use this tool that we just created to cut pieces off of this. And for that, we're going to use the knife project tool. So select the uh, target and go into edit mode and hit A, select all your pieces, and then control left mouse click on the cutting tool and then hit F3. And you may not see the word knife project pop up, but if not, you can just type knife and it'll say knife project. You can select that. And then down here in the left corner, you'll see this cut through option. You want to pick that just to make sure that the knife tool cuts all the way through uh, your target piece. All right, let's go and just look at the canopy. And if we hide this, we can see what happened is it created this nice cut here. So I can go into face mode and I'm gonna hit C for circle select. And I'm just gonna mouse over all the little bits that I don't want anymore. And we'll be able to cleanly cut those off the bottom of the canopy and get a nice, nice edge for the whole thing to start off with. 
see I've selected all that, hit X and delete the faces. And now we've got a nice, nice clean edge there. All right, next thing I wanna do is I wanna cut this bit here. So I'm going to, you know, I don't wanna see the Boolean ever again, like that. All right, so I wanna take this tool that I just created, this cut tool, GX, I'm gonna move it out here so you can see a little better. So that's what we use to project that bottom line. I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to hide it because we're going to, going to use that later for something. Uh, but I want to duplicate it because I want to reuse this line here. So I'm going to edit mode, one for vertexes. I'm going to hit the G key twice, and I'm, it's going to let me drag this point up along um, without changing this angle. This, it drags along the normal. I'm going to drag this up here, and I'm going to hit, so I'm trying to line it up on this line here. So I'm going to hit the G key twice, pull a little bit to the right and hit the C key, Charlie, and that lets me move it along the normal in the opposite direction. So now I've got a nice line there. Now there is a fillet here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure I apply rotation and scale because we're gonna use the bevel tool. So you can see how the stuff changed here. And the bevel, not the bevel tool, bevel command um, likes things to have uh, scale and rotation applied. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift B and that's going to let me as I drag my mouse, I bevel this corner. And if I roll my scroll wheel, I get more points. And I think five works really well, because uh, five is gonna let us do quads later on. Be able to like, imagine there's like a triangle that goes from here to here, like a common point here in the middle of this arc, and that'll give us quads go around the corner. So I like to use five. And now we have this new cutting tool that allow us to separate off the front of the canopy from the rest. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to edit mode, select everything, control left click our tool, F3, knife project has already been typed here. I just hit enter, cut through is already pre-selected. And now if I just select this object, go into face mode and see I can cut out all these pieces here. Go to wireframe, just box select all that. Now we got some extra stuff down here. We can clean that up, that's not a big deal. Um, all right, so let's hit P to separate that. And let's start by cleaning this thing up. I actually think that point's okay. The green bit needs to come down. So we'll uh, work on that later. I'm just gonna hide this so we can just concentrate on the front here. So let's go, I'm going to duplicate this piece again. Just gonna pull it off here and we're gonna use this edge here to create a parallel piece for the canopy frame. So I'm gonna hit Control I so I can select the other edges and I'm going to delete those edges. Go to vertex mode and I'm going to G twice again to go along the normal, hit C to go the other direction and I'm going to take the whole thing, I'm going to move it there and then I'm going to duplicate this guy, edit mode and make this bottom bit. So we're making a tool to cut the bottom. I'm going to join these together. I'm going to move this one along here until it gets to about there. And I'm going to merge them together. So I got a point there. Hit E to extrude up to here. Follow that line. And hit E again to go up here. And we're, I know we're going to have to do some extra work to get this canopy sill, or the, the um, faceplate here properly done. But for right now, this is what we're going to do. And down here, I want another bevel. So I'm going to control shift B again, and it's going to remember that I did five before. So it's going to put five in there for us. And that's going to be our next cutout. So it's select our canopy, select everything, control click our cutting tool, knife project. And you can see that it is cut out our canopy for, or, or the plexiglass for the canopy. So let's go into face mode. I just want the canopy bit here and just select the part that's going to be glass, or plexiglass. Right. So that's that bit, hit P, pull that out. So we're starting to see what this thing looks like. For the, um, so you can see how this line here doesn't quite match, so we'll, we'll fix that in a bit. Um, but I want to work on a cutting tool for this piece here. So I'm going to put my cursor 
right there in the center, go back into object mode, and I'm going to create a piece that fits along there. So um, let's go with mesh, circle, move along the y axis. And I'm, I know this isn't, the drawing isn't quite centered, so I'm going to really focus just on um, you know, the right hand side. Let's uh, let's scale it from that, so I can scale it this way, scale it this way. Just kind of fitting that curve there, and we don't need these bottom bits anymore. I can get rid of those. Let's kind of nudge these out a little bit, and then bring it down here. And I'm going to hit R, and that'll subdivide my segment in half, and that just kind of puts a point in the middle there, and just adjust the bits left and right until they follow that line. Maybe one more there. Don't want to do too many of them, uh, but you do need to follow the curve. So that's our that's our curve bit, and I can mirror that. Let me put the cursor right there. Cursor there. Object. Mirror. Control A. Rotation scale. Okay, this is going to be our new cutting piece, and it's going to cut the basically where the glass goes, where that that sharp edge is, and then I also want a piece that's going to cut this bit and it's basically the same thing. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to scale it X and move it Y a little bit. SX a little bit. Just try to conform to that line there. Alright, so that's that'll work. And let's see, let's let's select our base piece here. Control A or shift I'm yeah, sorry. A, select everything, uh, select our cutting tool here, and then hit uh, F3 for knife project. And we should be able to then pull out some of these bits here that are also part of the glass. All right, so we're gonna separate those and we're going to then combine these two bits, Control J. And you can see how that's working out there. Let's take a look at the top. Now there is a little bit of a fillet in here. If I draw and bring my reference material over, you can see how it comes up and a little bit of a fillet and a little bit of a, a flat edge there. So let's try to recreate that. And for this, I'm just going to cut there. And we're going to take this piece off. And we're going to add that back into that piece for now. So that's the beginning of our plexiglass piece. Um, if we want to, we can go back into edit mode, select everything, sorry, select everything, and then control left click the inner piece of our cut and uh, do another projection. Knife project. And that's going to be the glass for the uh, face of the canopy. So that's right there, that piece. That all came off as one, right? Good. So we can hit P to separate that. So now you can see we're starting to put together the, uh, you know, the raw components of it. So why don't we tackle this uh, piece of plexiglass here first. Let me move these into their um, own collection. So I'm going to create a collection, move, new collection, and we'll call it cuts. And we'll just move all these guys into that because it's going to get crowded with a bunch of these things out there. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to retopologize uh, this, this piece of plexiglass here so that uh, it's got nice, uh, nice quads everywhere. And you can see we've got some orphan vertexes here. Um, these are a result of that 
cut we came straight down on those that's where those things come from we've got some unconnected pieces uh, because we joined remember this piece was a separate piece and we joined that together so I can add an edge loop there and start merging some of these things together I don't want to do the shrink wrap right now so I'm going to merge them at the center and we can get rid of some of these orphans and we'll probably be adding more in later um, so I'm just hitting Control X to clean these up and for these I'm going to just hit M merge at last it's going to put one there and then we can start looking at things like this that kind of go off onto a tangent like that maybe connect that to here well, sometimes it won't let you if stuff's not joined so I'm hitting J there so it's failing there so why don't we try all M and then by distance you can see that it picked up three vertices that were on top of each other uh, so that was a problem that's why that wasn't working so I can get rid of this I can get rid of this um, here's another kind of thing that's trailing off into a triangle you take the knife tool hit K run that down here all the way down to the corner like that you can see I'm not really particularly careful about spacing or anything I'm really just trying to get um, things to be quads at this point okay again here I'm gonna run this down to there so we've got a, a line going there this one's gonna go to there and then I can get rid of these just looking for anything that doesn't look like a quad right now let's go back to vertex and see if I have any so I've got an orphan here that I want to get rid of so let me hit uh, control R there to add an edge loop so I'm gonna hit J to join those and I'm going to join those and I'll, I'll do something special with that corner later so let me space these out a bit so I'm going to select you know, along an edge like that and there's a under loop tools there's a space option and that'll let you space um, your vertices along and I have a um, I have a shortcut control control Q that lets me uh, just quickly do that I'm just grabbing these guys just to space them out And of course down there's an option down here you can do um, parallel all and it'll try to you saw that snap these down uh, so sometimes you want to do them individually sometimes you can do them as a parallel all so let's try it here and space it's on your parallel all I see it tried to space stuff out I got some weird stuff going on here not a big deal so we're already starting to look a lot better we've obviously got something going on with this corner that we need to fix so I'm gonna hit control R um, to create another edge loop there. And I'm going to join this one there. Okay. And then I've got a center point there, J. And if I move this this way, oops, that was an H, not a J, a G. So I'm a GG to move my point there. So I got one, two, three, four, five bits. I remember I told you five was a good number for a corner piece. I'm just moving this along the normals. And you can see how that, oops, moved it a little bit up. See that forms quads now in the corner. We got one, two, three, four sides for each of those. And I can move this down here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll try to create a parallel line along the bottom. So I'll hit GG, I'll hit E, and you can see there's a little red dot right there. That tells you which side of the line is trying to uh, move these things parallel to. If I hit F, it switches to the other side. You can see it up there now, but I want it on the bottom here. You can see how it tries to space them nicely along this bottom edge so I'm creating a kind of control edge along here I'm going to take this one and hit GG to move it along the normals hit E and then F so that I'm kind of going parallel to the front edge there do the same thing here GG E F then it'll give me a nice parallel edge there and these I'm going to hit GG E F and I'm going to bring it up so we've got a nice nice loop now that goes all the way around here goes around that corner goes up got some nice quads so I'm gonna go from here to here hit Q uh, control Q rather for my spacing and it's parallel also it nicely picked the ones that, that were similar I'm gonna do the same thing here you can see how that moves it up nicely and all of a sudden we've got a uh, pretty nice looking um, piece of plexiglass there with nice quads nice geometry and uh, in the corners we've got uh, some control pieces here so in a rounded piece like this we want some control to a round corner that's why I got this five in a place like this I want kind of two points that are close to this because we're going to want this to be a sharp edge 
and having um, edges that are close to this lets us keep that edge sharp even though there's a subdivision surface on it. So the next thing to do, take a look at it from the side, let's bring back all of our stuff. Um, you can see how the shape has now changed. Right, it's no longer fitting there. And that's because we moved a bunch of points around, but that's okay. That's why we have that shrink wrap. So if I turn the shrink wrap on, you can see how they just snapped it down right away. So let's go turn that on and off. You can see how that works. Now it may be that we don't have enough vertexes here. We could add a couple more since there's a curve here. And you can see how that draws things up a little bit. Much nicer that way. Um, and whenever I do this, I often will, will duplicate that shrink wrap and apply it so those points actually get moved into that position. So now we've got our, our piece of plexiglass there. So let's take a crack at the canopy frame next. This bit. Uh, let me get rid of the mirror. Get rid of the shrink wrap for now. And I want to turn back on my cuts because I want to do an additional cut for this little bit here. If we look at um, our reference material, you can see how the canopy frame comes up. There's a sharp edge and then it comes flat across. So right now we've got this, we've got a cut here. I need to create um, this piece of metal there. So let me get rid of that. And that would be this line right there. So I'm going to take this cut piece that we made before. I'm going to duplicate it. Oops, duplicate it and shrink it down. Move it on the Y axis. And I'm only looking at the right hand side. Um, this should give us a fairly parallel piece to work with. So well, that's okay for now. I'm going to make it a little longer so that it goes past the end. So I'm going to hit the G key twice, hit the C key to go in the opposite direction. And that gives us that piece. So let's uh, select our faceplate there, control left click on our cutting tool, hit the knife, you know, hit F3 to bring up our knife tool, project. We're on cut through, that's good. So now let's separate our pieces. So we're going to take that piece out, hit P, selection. And now I want to join these two together. And what I want is I let me turn off the cut so we don't have to see. I want I want to remember that this edge is kind of a sharp edge. So what I sometimes do is I will just temporarily mark it um, as either a sharp or a seam or something. Um, so if you do like Control E, uh, you could um, say mark mark sharp and that'll make it a nice blue line it's not going to stay that way forever but it just it just kind of tells me like don't touch this line it's it's kind of a reference point and everything else needs to kind of go from that so let's isolate this go into edit mode I'm gonna hit one vertex is all and I'm gonna say merge by distance so we can see we got 21 vertices that were on top of each other and now it's a matter of you know, turning this into quads again and creating a nice topology. So I'm just going to kind of fast forward and do that. I'm not going to narrate through it. So right now we've got kind of like the base set of quads here. I just kind of converted everything, cleaned it up a bit. Um, next thing to do is to duplicate that shrink and apply it. You'll see it conform better. Let's bring back our stuff and see how we're doing. Now obviously the edges of these things don't match up yet, but that's fine. Um, it's not important at this point. Uh, it is important though that this edge here flows nicely. So that looking good. And what we can do also is we can edit them together. 
And sometimes it's helpful if adjacent pieces have the same number of vertices, because then when you put a subdivision on it, uh, things tend to match up a little bit better. So I'm going to now start kind of blending some of the topology between these two uh, so that uh, we get verts that are kind of um, in the same places. So I can work with this guy and I've got snapping, magnet turned on snapping, and I'm on vertexes. So I can take this and snap it there. And you know, in this case, I kind of need some detail on this curve here. Um, so I'm going to add Control R, add a edge loop there, and I'm just going to move it along until it's pretty close to there. Go back into snapping mode and snap that piece there. So I got all those pieces snapped, and let's do a shrink wrap again, because we move things around, uh, just to make sure everything's really where it's supposed to be. Let's take a look at material and mat cap. So smooth this. So you can see we've got uh, nice smooth lines there. And we do have issues with you know mating surfaces; they're not. Uh, They're not quite up against each other, but that's fine. We'll take care of that later. And we do need to also um, work on the sharp edge, but I think that's a, a bit for a little bit later. So, so far, so good. Let's start working on these edges, these seams, trying to get things to be nice and tight. Right now we got some gaps and unevenness. And we're going to use our cuts to create tools that we can use to do that. So let's start with this one. I'm going to take this edge here, Shift D to duplicate it, GX. I'm going to move it off. I'm going to turn off magnet. We don't need that. I'm going to edit mode. I'm going to hit EX. I'm going to bring it so it goes all the way through. Move that a little further that way. And then I'm going to move the edge along the normals so that it extends beyond. So G twice, back this way, then C to go the other direction. G twice, C Charlie, and then back forward down that way. And that'll give us a plane here that we can use to snap these two edges to. And anything here, I'm going to make these wires so that you can see a little better. For the top piece, for this edge here, I'm going to duplicate this guy. I'm going to move it, oops, I'm going to move it up. And let's hide these for a moment. Go into edit mode, and I'm going to hit select all, and E, and then hit Z, Z, go straight down. And that's going to be our uh, piece that we're going to use for alignment along there. Now this one we want to make super smooth because it's a curve, so I'm going to select all the edges except that one, put a full crease on it, and then go into, I'm going to add a subdivision server modifier to it. And we'll crank it up to maybe three. Shade smooth. And what the, by adding the subsurface modifier with a fairly high number, we'll have a nice, really smooth edge here that we can use to make sure all these points line up nice and smooth. For the other two sides here, I'm actually going to keep all of this. I'm going to duplicate this. Hit Shift D, X, Moodle on the X axis, P, change it. And this guy, I'm going to extrude E, X, and I'm just going to bring it all the way through. That's good. And I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to select all the edges that I want to keep sharp. And the reason I do that is if I put a subdivision surface on here, um, you can see that it rounds the corners. And I don't want that, but if I put a crease on the outer edges, it keeps those corners straight. But uh, we, uh, we get this, this fillet here, which is what we want. All right, so let's, let's change that so it's wireframe. All right, good. 
let's start let's start with the uh, plexiglass here and I want to select let's do the curve first to go from this one all the way down there so I'm just shift shift selecting all the vertexes along that that curve and I'm going to create a vertex group for that we'll call it T for top and assign it at at one at full strength I'm going to create another one here I'm going to call this one F for front assign it now I'm going to go down here and select all these back ones and we'll call this uh, bottom rear BR all right and that's assigned and now we can create some uh, shrink wraps so we get these edges to go where we want them to go so I create a shrink wrap and we might as well duplicate because we're going to need three of them call this one top T for top it will use the T vertex group and this will be shrinking against this bit here this one will use the front one, so we'll call it F for front, and we'll use, I can't see it very well, there we go. Use this one here, we'll snug down to that, and only the vertexes in the F group will be used. And the last one is the BR group, bottom rear, choose that guy, and we'll just call this BR. All right, so if I come in here close here, you can see as I, uh, toggle this on and off it's actually you know making a difference there as to where that that edge is now in doing this it's going to mess up the vertical or the alignment along the um, underlying shrink wrap right that's this guy this is the shrink wrap to our base mesh so what often I what I often have to do is I have to apply duplicate and apply the shrink wrap several times in order to make sure that all the vertices nudge themselves into the corners and places where they need to go so let's start by duplicating the top Apply it, duplicating the front, apply it, duplicating the bottom, apply it. I'm just going to hide these for a moment. And now I'm going to duplicate the main shrink wrap and apply it. And what I look for is if I turn this on, do I, do I see any motion? And if the answer is yes, then I want to reapply it. I duplicate it and apply it. How about this one? A little bit of motion, so I want to duplicate it apply it a little bit, duplicate it, apply it. And then I'll duplicate the main one again, have it snuggle down some more. This sometimes takes a couple iterations to get all the pieces to snuggle in. So I'm going to say good enough for now. You can always reapply these later, um, and things will change a little bit once we add some thickness to this. Um, but uh, right now, it's following that curve pretty well. If we look at it from the top, you can see that the uh, plexiglass piece has a nice, nice smooth curve on both of these. Uh, it's exactly what we want. So let's uh, do something similar with the frame here. We already have a shrink wrap for that piece and for this piece. Yeah, so we can use all the same shrink wraps for the inside of this uh, window. So let's um, create a, let's create some vertex groups. We're going to create one. Call it again. I guess we'll call it top again. Uh, bottom or front rather, and bottom rear again. So we'll use the same idea here. We're going to select these all the way down to there, and that one. That'll be the top one, so we'll assign that to there. This one will be the bottom rear. All right, so we'll assign that to this one, and then the front goes from here to there. Assign that. And now we just need to create the shrink wraps for that. So shrink wrap. Duplicate it a couple times. Call this one top. We'll choose this bit here. Call this one front. Choose this one. And we'll do the bottom rear one here. We are bottom rear group and that guy. 
And we're just going to do the same thing where we duplicate and apply them a couple times. These uh, edge shrink wraps, um, by the time the project's done, they're probably no longer needed at all. Um, but the the main shrink wrap, the one that, that shrinks wraps down to the uh, base base mesh, typically that one stays on all the way through the end of the project because it just gives a really nice uh, flow to all the pieces and make sure that each surface lines up nicely with each other. So I'm just going to apply this again and then turn them off. Turn that on, turn on subdivisions. And now you can see, let me turn, turn off the cuts, that our seams are, are much better than they were before. And they'll get even better once we get um, some thickness to this. All right, let's do something similar for the, the main, main window here. Unhide these. Now this one's going to be a different, different loop there. So we'll take that loop, duplicate it, move it straight up just to get it out of the way. Let me hide these guys. This one, I'm going to go edit mode, all easy, straight down till it goes all the way through. I'm going to select all the edges except the back one, crease them, put a subdivision on that, get three, shade smooth, and wire frame. All right, so on this one, we're going to add another uh, shrink wrap here. So let's add a shrink wrap. And we're going to need another vertex group as well. We want from here to here to there to be in the new group because we want to make it uh, snuggle down to that inside line. So let's add another one. And I don't know what to call this. Um, inside. Doesn't matter what you call it. Call it inside. And we're going to call this one in. We're going to Choose the in group and the in target. Let me just hide that for a moment, and so you can see the effect of this. I was toggling the wrong thing. There we go. So we're going to do the same thing. All right, and let's let's bring back our tools here, and now I'm just going to work on the uh, front glass. And we haven't actually done anything with the geometry on this, and there's actually more than just glass here. There's a there's a plate, so let's um, let's make sure we get that in here. So I'm going to put another vertex here. I'm going to G. I'm going to hit the K tool for knife, and I'm going to hit A and C. And it's going to lock my line to be a horizontal line, and it's going to also then cut through all underneath. Um, okay, so those are shortcuts for that. So let's take that, and we'll make that a separate piece. Uh, sorry, I just went into weight paint mode. Here we go. All right, so we have got that piece as separate. Now we can um, make this quads, which shouldn't be too bad, because I'm just going to just go K, A, and then just going to draw a line straight across. All right, so you can see what I've got a bunch of quads, and we're going to just take the outer edge here all the way down, and we're going to create a group for that, vertex group. Call it S for shrink. Who knows? And we're going to add a shrink wrap for the S group. And then we just need to choose the target for that, which is this guy. Wrong guy. That's not the one we want. We want the inner one. So choose that. Choose that, choose that, that's better. All right, and then we're just going to similarly duplicate and apply. Now, this piece of glass, remember, is, is completely flat. And like, if we want to double check, we or um, if we're worried about it becoming unflattened, 
Well, we got the string graph. That should work. So let's apply that. I was going to say we could we could shrink it against the boolean that's used for cutting it, but it's fine because it's shrunk to the underlying base mesh. And let's do just kind of finalize here. So we got quads on there. We choose these. We'll call that outside. Assign it. And at some point we'll worry about the top and bottom, but uh, not right now. And we'll create a shrink wrap for the outside group. And let's bring back our shrinks. That's not the one we want. We want this one. You can see that moved a little bit. So let's duplicate and apply that. Let's just call that. So we said it was the O group. Oops. Yeah, oh, we'll call it O. And just snuggle it down. All right. So let's add some thickness to our panels. We can um, we can see that everything's starting to get nice and snug. We got uh, something that's starting to look like a canopy. Let's put some thickness on some of these bits so I can hide our cuts. We don't need to see those for the time being. This should really be in the cuts. Out of the way. All right, let's start with the, uh, the glass here, this plexiglass. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select all the edges around here. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to uh, control E and then mark the seam so that when I eventually, when I do UV layouts, it'll already be done. And I'm going to set the mean bevel weight to one. It just so happens that usually the uh, UV island borders also often match where you want a mean bevel weight. Uh, so I often just do those two things at the same time just to save some time. So let's add a solidify modifier to this and we'll make it maybe three millimeters thick. And we do want even thickness and everything else is okay. So let's apply that. And you can see right away it, it got thin again. And that's because the shrink wrap is on. Let me turn that off. I'm gonna turn all this stuff off for now. And what we want to do is we want to create a group for the shrink wrap so that it only shrinks the outer surfaces here. So if I hit three on my uh, top row of numbers, so I'm in face mode and then uh, hit L, uh, because I have a UV seam here, it's just going to collect, select that outer face, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to create a new group here. I'm going to sign it. I'm just going to call it S for shrink. And then down here in the shrink wrap, I'm going to choose that a vertex group and now when I turn on the shrink wrap it doesn't it doesn't affect the inner surface which is what we want now we do need to add a couple of extra bevels here because uh, now we have some thickness we've got these corners so we've got one there and these are places where we want a sharp corner one right there this one obviously we want to rounded and then this one up here I also want a bevel and this really, really helps uh, crisp up the corners. If I turn back on the subdivisions and bevel, you can see how that corner just flows through there. But if I bang this back up to one, you get a really nice sharp piece there, nice sharp corners there. Um, I really love the bevel modifier. So I've got it just set to one millimeter and two segments with a weight there. You know, and then the, maybe the last thing to do with this piece in particular is to add a glass shader to it. Um, not going to spend really any any significant time on the uh, uh, my my world environment is just a uh, HDR. That's all. That is, um, I'm not going to spend any time for shading or with textures in this. So we're just going to throw on a PBR. Maybe I'll just throw a glass on there, shader, glass, and that'll be our side panel. See how that looks? Looks like glass. All right, let's do another bit. Let's do the uh, canopy frame here. And we're gonna do something similar. We're gonna go around the edges. So let me turn off all the modifiers here. And this we don't wanna have as a, sh as a sharp, I think it was originally marked sharp just for, so we could see what was going on. But So I'm going to select around the edges along here. And these are going to be both control E for mark seam and a weight of one. And then I want this line here also to be sharp. Remember, 
it folds up and then flat and that's sharp so let's set that to one also for a mean crease and now we can add our solidify and we'll make this you know let's say let's say 10 millimeters maybe 15 thicker all right want an even thickness and we want it solid so let's apply it edit it and we're going to do the same thing with the uh, shrink wrap group uh, actually let's first let's sharpen these edges and put uh, um, bevel weights on these corners and uh, also cut them for mirroring so those are those so i can hit uh, control e mark seam bevel weight of one that'll make sure these guys are all nice and tight i don't need these faces here one thing I do need to worry about is whether or not these faces are really still in the center line. You can see how they, they bulge out. We don't want that. So I'm going to hit Shift C, and that's going to put my cursor right at the origin. And then I can, while I'm in 3D cursor mode, I can hit SX0, and that'll, sorry, SX0, enter. And that'll really tighten that up, and then I can just delete these faces because I don't need them because it's going to be mirrored like that. I just want to get rid of those faces. Now we also have some sharp corners on the insides. So if I turned on subdivision here, you can see how we got a fillet there on the real aircraft. That's actually a sharp edge. So I'm going to change that. And the same thing here, this edge is also sharp. So I'm going to sharpen that. And then up here in the top here, these edges here are sharp as well. Now what we want to do is we want to check to make sure that uh, things are still smooth because sometimes the bevels can add little creases and wrinkles places. So those are all on. Oh, I forgot to take off the, um, I forgot to limit the shrink wrap just to the outside. So face mode, L, I'm gonna select just the outside faces. I'm going to create a new shrink wrap, call it S for shrink, assign the outside. And then inside of our shrink wrap for our base mesh, I'm just gonna choose that. That should just snuggle down the outside, which is what we want. And the order that you put these in is important. Mirror, often I put first, then the bevel above the subdivision, because the, this is going to cause the subdivision to have nice tight creases along the edges. And then the subdivision, you want above the shrink wrap because this is going to add extra faces and vertices that the shrink wrap can then use to really uh, get this to conform nicely to the underlying surface. So this is the order that I like to do them in. Again, getting back to what I was saying before, you can see up here, there's like some weird wrinkles here in the corner and this often happens when there's a bevel on the inside of a corner uh, one way to address that is oops looks like we don't have a quad there oop, oop. fix that all right better one way to fix that is to add a couple of tight edges here and i'm going to just space these things out here just because they should be Um, let me turn on this stuff. You can see how it works. So you can see I've got, it's kind of hard to tell, I guess, but there's a little bit of pinching there. If I hit uh, G key twice and bring this over so that it's close and do it again, and you can see it a little better on this one. See that there's facets there that's shadowing. Hit the G key twice. You can see how as I bring this in closer, I keep that shape sharp corner, but I get rid of those shadows. And now that corner looks really nice and sharp. You know, we got no distortion there at all. And that's a combination of the bevel, the subdivision, and then the shrink wrap. And then we should check down on the other inside corners. So this one down here, a uh, similar problem. Sometimes you can fix it just by adding a bevel on the surface. So let's try that. So we don't have to add any other geometry. Um, yeah, that seemed to work pretty well. Sometimes you'll get a, a little bit of a facet. You can see a little facet right there. If that bothers you, then you could use the same trick I just used by adding an extra edge loop. But um, that looks pretty good there. This one, you can see a little dimple there. We need to fix that. Maybe we can get away with just putting a mean weight on there. If, Yep, okay, so there's no faceting line there. So that looks pretty good too. So that's really looking sharp. And can go out of there, bring stuff back. And let's do the front face here. And we want to add a, let's go and add the edges. 
So control E, mark seam, add the mean weight, solidify. Now this is going to be a little thicker. So maybe we'll leave it at 10 millimeters. It's a lot thicker than the side glass is. So we'll leave that even thickness, apply it, turn off the shrink wrap because that's what's uh, in fact, we probably don't even need the shrink wrap on this because it's a flat piece, so there's there's no contours or anything. So we just leave that off. Maybe we don't don't need that one. This is the one that conforms to the face, and this is the one that does the edges. So we're probably done with both of those. And then we need to add, of course, the inside corner because the subdivision is going to make that that curve. So I'm going to change that to a one. Control E, mark seam, and then because it's mirrored, we still have to clean up the inside edge here. So I'm going to select that lower face. Control shift click up to the top, delete faces, and then I can turn on my mirror, my bevel, my subdivision, and we can add that glass shader to that, which is this one. All right. And then, of course, there's the last piece here, and we're going to do the same thing. I solidify, leave it at 10, even thickness, apply, turn this stuff off for a bit. Uh, it's mirrored, so we want to get rid of the inside faces. I forgot to uh, select my edges first, and now I got to do double work. So I'm selecting all the way around. Control E, mark seam, bevel weight one. So I can turn on bevel, turn on the mirror, turn on the subdivision. Probably not necessary. This is a flat piece, so we can just leave that off. Don't need the shrink wrap because this is a flat piece, and we don't need that either. So there is our canopy. If we wanted to, we could add maybe a shader to the, uh, the actual framework here if you wanted to. There are some things you can do. Um, I don't know what to call it. We'll call it white. There are some things you can do in your shader to try to enhance the uh, effect of the um, bevels and the different panels. Because if we go ahead and render this, uh, we we get a nice model, but you don't actually see the panels so much. Try to get the light a different way. Just trying to highlight the front a bit. So it's it's, it's hard to see the panel lines. They're, they're there. They're really crisp. Um, they're very tight. But you can do some other things inside of the shader if you want to help accentuate that. So let's let's add that shader to this one as well. So for both that color and I'll just kind of try to quickly build something here. Uh, one thing is you can use uh, ambient occlusion. So we can search for ambient occlusion. Throw that in here. I'm going to add a math node. And I'm going to sh change that over to power. And that's going to affect how strong the ambient occlusion works. I like typically try like a three or four. Let's try four. See what the effect is here. You get little shadows and stuff. And we can run that through a color ramp. And we can tighten that up even more. Let's just bring this back. But well, you can adjust it either way. So if you want to increase, you can see how it's increasing the shadows down here. This just gives you some flexibility as to where those shadows are. Let's add a bevel node as well. And this is going to accentuate the actual bevels on it. So let's try four and a something small, like a 0 0.006 maybe. I want to overdo it. And if I just highlight this, you can see what it does. You can see it's got these pink lines in here that are accentuating the edges of things. And we're going to use that both in the ambient occlusion. So let me go back to this and then add this in here into the normal. You can see how that adds some depth, some darkness to it. And we can also use that um, in the normal of the actual PBR. So we're going to put this in a color, and that's our paint. Um, but then we can plug this into the normal for more accentuation. I'm just going to back this off because it's too much. So you can see how it really makes it black if I drag it way forward. And if you wanted to, you could um, you could make like dirt colors in here if you wanted to have a gradient or some noise textures. So if you wanted dirt accumulating inside your recesses. Uh, but for right now, I'm just trying to accentuate some of those panel lines. All right, and so that's our, our canopy. Um, so I know there's a lot more on this canopy to do. And we've got 
the rest of the piece back here but honestly it's it's the same technique over and over and over again cut shrink wrap redefine the topology so we got a nice line on it uh, or nice uh, you know quads nice flowing lines um, and then just you know add thickness and edges and there you go so I, I don't think there's any utility to me continuing all this all the way down the panel because it's exactly the same stuff over and over again uh, if you have questions leave them in the comments um, I'll try to answer them uh, good luck with your projects and thanks for watching